So now in this video, we're going to look at one of the properties of the JFET transistor. So this is the J310 and N channel MOSFET. And this comes from the Joe Knows Electronics kit. If there's a little tag up there, uh, there's faded writing on that. Unfortunately, mine was pretty faded. Hopefully, if you buy one, you have uh, better writing than I did. But in any case, we can also look at the uh, component right there, J310. It does not say G on there like uh, the tag but in any case it's uh, J310 and the pin layout we're gonna look at the IDSS of this and I think that's how uh, you would explain it but the uh, pin to the left here that is the drain that's gonna go to the positive side of the power supply here is the source and then uh, pin 2 the middle pin and pin 3 the right pin is the gate and the gate is actually how you control how well it conducts it naturally conducts unlike the bipolar junction transistor and the uh, gate it actually makes it conduct a little less so in any case let's zoom in and get a look and then we'll talk also why we have these uh, LEDs so I'm gonna put the drain one spot down away from that jumper then we have this jumper going to the source and uh, it's kind of hard to see actually what's going on at the moment I'll just bend the uh, wire a little bit but uh, there we go so we're going to take three LEDs when you wire up the transistor the JFET here and channel the way that uh, I'm going to now it will after I short the uh, gate to ground also which will connect the source and the uh, gate together it will pass a certain amount of current based on its IDSS. Now, that can vary even amongst the same component. So according to the data sheet, it can be anywhere from, I think it was 24, 24, 25 uh, milliamps up to 60 milliamps. So we're gonna put three LEDs in parallel and the voltage is already lowered. The output is actually on. I thought I turned it off. Let's turn it off. And, uh, but the voltage is lower, so we're safe. And so three parallel LEDs can pass 60 milliamps of current pretty safely. And uh, so we limited this to 50 just in case. And also it kind of helps that the uh, top current you can expect from this is 60 milliamps. So of course the long lead goes to the positive rail. The uh, short lead of all of these are going to the drain up there, the top pin of the transistor right there. So now to finish wiring this up, we are just going to take a jumper, put it to the negative rail. So the uh, source here, the middle pin is connected to the negative rail, as will be the gate. So it's a direct connection, even though there's a lot of wire traveling going on. We could, you know, crowd it a little more if we wanted to wire it like that, if that would be easier. But uh, doing this is literally the same thing. We're connected to the same point that is called a node. So let's not uh, drag out that anymore. So now we got three of them in parallel. They will split the current, hopefully evenly. That's one thing about uh, parallel semiconductors is the one that's actually blocking the least voltage will have the most current go through. So hopefully they're blocking exactly the same, but uh, we, we have some safety margins. So we're gonna, the output is on raise the voltage so now you can see they're on that's only eight milliamps of current total and so this is only maybe off by one or two uh, milliamps there we got five volts and a 29 milliamps we go to 632 so that's actually what I was expecting so remember these are blocking about three volts before the transistor gets into action so it looks like we probably need at least three volts across the transistor because now we go to seven Eight. you can see the current is holding steady maybe it'll go up slightly when it gets warmer and also maybe it was right on the edge of uh, going there too so in any case main takeaway is uh, we got a set amount of current when we short that and that will be the most current that this transistor can provide so uh, we basically told it be on as much as you can for the most part let's see what happens if I remove that you can see it goes down so so there you go so, now, the uh, thing is that these uh, transistors, even the same part number, may have a different current. But 
it's more unpredictable how much current they'll have if they're from different batches so I'm assuming these are from the same batch I'm going to swap that one out for this one they're all the uh, J310s and uh, there you can see I think that is slightly higher isn't it wasn't it like uh, 34 maybe it was 36 I can't remember but uh, in any case one of these was just slightly different than the other two and uh, okay there's 38 so that's a little bit higher than the last one but still in the same range but that's probably because they're from the same batch you know even the same batches uh, they'll, they'll vary slightly and uh, you may find some that are the same or or whatnot if they're from different batches they'll probably be more off than uh, than what we see here but in any case that's the uh, IDSS I guess is how you would explain it that's what it says on the data sheet I for current and then D for drain and then SS for a source that is connected directly to ground 